So in our last video, we wrote an algorithm to determine whether uh, giving a string, whether we have a palindrome or not. And I showed you how to use dynamic programming to solve this. And I also said that using DP is probably not the best thing for, for question number one. Is it a palindrome? You, you can solve it in a different way. However, I wanted to show you a pattern that you need to solve the second question where you have to use DP because it's the most efficient way of solving it. So this question is, find the longest palindrome giving a string. So let me show you the question and let's get started. So giving a string S, make it bigger, giving a string S, return the longest palindrome substring in S. So for example, if 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 this input is B A B A D, B A B is a palindrome. So return that. You can also return A B A. That's also a palindrome. Either either one of that would work. If you're giving C B B D, the longest one is B D B B. So even though B itself is a palindrome, but B B is the longest. So you return that. If you're giving A, you return A, because uh, one character is a palindrome by its definition. If you're giving A C return A or C. Uh, either answers would work because that's a, uh, because those are palindromic. All right, so let's begin. So I have out, I wrote here the outputs of what we're going to print to test them out, to test all four, what to expect. So let's begin writing our code. So I hope you watched my last video on is it a palindrome because I'm not going to spend as much time explaining some things that I spent time in the previous video. So let's get started. So we're going to define palindrome because we're going to need that. Then we're going to define my uh, my uh, matrix. We're going to say, you know what, before we do that, let's define the length, string.length. And then we can say const dp equals, we're going to create an array of length n. We're going to fill the array with zero. For each of them, we are going to return an array. And then we get, for each of them, we're going to return an array of length n and fill it with false. There we go. So again, I, I explained in the last video what this looks like and how to do that as well. So now that we have that, we're going to try our base case. Case 1, this is case 1, where you, you can have a string of A. So for a case like this, we need to we just define a quick loop. I equals 0, I is less than N, I plus plus. So in, in this case, N is 1, because that's the length i is 0, 0 is less than 1. So we'll say dp of i, i equals true. Set that to true. And then we would say palindrome, palindrome um, equals sri. So, and then we can return palindrome. So right away, if I print this, this would return a or c. The rest of these should not return in the correct answers. So let's take a look at that re really quick. i right, just make this bigger. All right. Okay, node, tutorial, missing initializer. All right, did not initialize it. It's instead of const, it should be let because I'm changing the value. So let's do it again. So it gives me a which is correct. These are wrong. Well, C is technically right, but that's it's it's not solving it. It gives me D, but that's the wrong answer. It gives me D. The only one that's correct here is the first one, A. So we so we have taken care of the first case. So we need a case for case two, where you have A C or A A. So it needs to return that for you. And we can actually create that case here. So let's do that. AA. There we go. All right, so let's write case two. So for case two, we'll do the same thing. We'll start with 
row equals zero, row is less than n, row plus plus, and minus one. And then we'll say, let the column equals um, r plus one, column is greater than r, and column should always decrease. So in this case, we are so we're starting from the first character, uh, hence row equals zero, and then we increment to row equals one, zero, one. Here we have r less than n is two, so two minus, so two minus one is one. So actually, no, this should be n then. All right, that's fine. And then we have c is greater than r plus one, which makes sense. C is greater than r. I mean, c equals r plus one, and c is greater than r, and you decrement with c. So we can test. We can say if s string of r equals string of c, then we have a palindrome, basically. So, so on our first iteration, it's going to ask us r is here. And C is C, meaning the, the R points of the row is here, is in the first character. C is in the second character. Are they equal? No. So that is nothing. Look at the next one. Is Does S string of R equal string of C? Yes. The, the, they are equal. So let's change that. Set it to true. And then we'll say our palindrome equals string substring create a substring of this c plus 1 c plus 1 so 0 1 so now we can print this out this will return the correct answer this will return the correct answer and this will return the correct answer the bottom two will not because we have not created a cases for those two so let's clear this correct correct and correct the others are not correct as you see this returns bb because it, it only checks for two it does uh, and it gives you the two that are uh, palindromes here there's no two identical that are next to each other so now let's create a case for the last two the last two types case three a uh, for this would work for something like this or for something like this or anything greater or any string that's greater this would work so we're gonna start this is this is we're gonna start from the column as a matter of fact I'm gonna explain to you why the column is less than n column plus plus we're gonna then row equals zero R row plus c is less than n row plus plus we're going to define a constant w equals r plus c all right so let's stop there first so c starts at 2 so that we where, where is this pointer at where is c so 0 1 2 so right now c is going to start at b you know what let's use this let's use this one this would be better to understand so c is going to start at this b over here R is going to start at the first one. So R is going to start at the first B. C is going to start at the second B. Now we're going to ask this question. Is string of R equal to string of W? I mean, obviously, this is equal because B equals B. Hence, this is going to be a palindrome, regardless of what's in between. It could be T. It could be y, it could be p, it's going to be a palindrome. So that's why we started at the third column, 0, 1, 2. Now here's the trick. We need to make sure that this value is true inside the dp. When it goes through these process, it's going to mark it as true. We need to make sure that the value of, of, um, of a or whatever character there is true and not false. So to confirm that, we'll say dp of, so r is here, so we're going to move r up 1, so r plus 1, the, uh, c is here, 
well w in this case is here so we're going to move w back one to point to a w minus one so we want to confirm that this is true that's what we want to confirm so once we meet this criteria we have a palindrome and if this is not a palindrome then it moves to the next one then it goes to a and then it checks this these three and then it checks these three that's what it does so once we have this now we have a palindrome so we can say dpr d and w so is true and then we'll say let's create a new, a new palindrome because I'll, I'll tell you a substring of r w plus one reason is the question tells us to find the longest palindrome the longest so we want to make sure we are finding the longest so we'll say if new palindrome dot length is greater than the palindrome that we have already the one for bb or aa if that's true then palindrome equals new palindrome that's it and now we can return palindrome let's just make sure perfect so this everything here will return the correct answers let's try this again okay this returns bab perfect it can be ab either it just returns bab because they have the same length bb is the correct one here and that's it uh, leave comments if you have not subscribed please subscribe thank you